Hi everyone, my name is Neil Ray. I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist. CEO and founder of Radiant Oximetry. And our mission is to improve outcomes for mothers and babies during childbirth by developing a better fetal monitor. The reason why we need to develop a better fetal monitor is because current fetal heart rate monitoring technology has an accuracy of a coin toss in predicting fetal distress. This is a technology that's been around for 50 years and it looks at changes in the baby's heart rate during uterine contractions to figure out which babies are in distress. Unfortunately, it has a false positive rate of 89%, which leads to the unnecessary overuse of C-section deliveries. And it also has a high false negative rate, which leads to half the babies that are actually in distress not being identified. So what we've done at Radiant Oximetry is develop a new type of fetal monitor. We're not looking at the baby's heart rate and changes in the heart rate, but rather the oxygen saturation. Because we all know in healthcare that oxygen saturation is a much better predictor of distress than changes in heart rate. And the way our technology works is the same way pulse oximetry works. We shine light at blood to tell you what color it is. Blood that's oxygenated is red, and blood that's deoxygenated is purple. And so we do a color analysis of the baby's blood, but what's unique about our technology is we do it from the maternal abdomen. We shine light through the maternal abdomen non-invasively. We get two signals, one from mom and one from baby. We're able to separate the two signals because the heart rates are different. So we isolate the baby's signal, we do a color analysis of it, and we tell you how much oxygen's in the baby's system. We validated our technology through pregnant sheep with a really tight-fitting curve, and we've also got our first in human data at Tufts University in Boston. We presented our data to the FDA last year and got breakthrough status for expedited approval. The FDA recognizes that we're solving a large unmet clinical need for a large patient population, and they've given us proposed marketing claims that our technology can aid in the diagnosis of fetal distress during labor and delivery. And we believe through the improved identification of fetal distress, we're going to be able to improve outcomes for newborns by reducing fetal acidosis and brain injury. We're going to reduce emergency C-section rates for fetal distress. We're going to reduce maternal mortality that's associated with repeat overuse of C-sections. And we're going to improve neonatal morbidity that's associated with unnecessary C-sections. Our vision is to be the first company that provides this vital sign to the market. There's currently no way to monitor a baby's oxygen saturation. And we want to be an entirely disposable sensor company. Every labor and delivery suite has a fetal monitor with open ports, and we want to plug into those ports to display our vital sign. We think this is attractive from a hospital hardware acquisition point of view, as well as a clinical workflow point of view, because there's no changes to existing workflow. At scale, we believe the cost of goods of our disposable sensors will be $15, and we've identified existing product lines that sell for $250. We're about four years old, and we've raised almost $10 million through a seed round and Series A. This year, we'll be getting our IDE from the FDA to do a 60-patient pilot study, and then we'll use that data to do a Series B of $16 million to do a pivotal study and get PMA approval. We are a class three technology, but we believe that that's an opportunity versus a barrier. This is data from Silicon Valley Bank, and it shows that PMA devices have been getting acquired pre-FDA approval, pre-commercialization for a median price of $350 million and in six years. This is in contrast to 510K companies, which are getting um, acquired post-FDA approval, post-revenue generation, and for a price of about $135 million. What I'm most proud of is the team I've been able to build to solve this challenging problem. On our board, we've got individuals from Edwards, Nelcor, Covidian, and Boston Scientific. My management team has deep expertise in operation, clinical, regulatory, and technical backgrounds. And we've got some of the best minds in biophotonics, and some of the most influential OBGYNs serving on our advisory board. Thank you. Guys, have any questions for Neil? Yeah, very nice presentation. Thank you. Since our country embarrassingly has one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world, uh, 
anything that can help, and this looks promising. Thank you. I'm curious if you have plans to put it into a mobile device and, and actually access to low resource settings uh, rather than just using existing uh, kind of high resource setting hardware. I like that, that you're doing that, but what are your roadmap for that? Yeah, down the road, that is something we are thinking about. Initially, we're thinking labor and delivery exclusively. We've shown in our first in human data that we can also get measurements from the fetus during the third trimester. And this would be a, a way for low resource settings to stratify which patients need to be you know, transferred to the regional hospital. So yeah, that's definitely on our mind. We've talked to the Gates Foundation about that, um, but it's not our initial market. Um, great presentation. Um, a friend of mine just delivered and had some had their child was went into fetal distress, so very timely. But um, do you anticipate if any uh, workflow changes will be required or training requirements for the clinicians who now have to interpret the data? And how how do you suppose that will take place? There'll be a little bit of education. So fetuses live at a low oxygen saturation compared to you and I. They actually live around 50%. So there'll be a little bit of education, but we don't think it'll be that hard. Just like it's not that hard for you to use a pulse oximeter, we don't think that our technology will be any different. This is perhaps a naive question, but how are doctors doing it right now? Yeah, so right now they're reading tea leaves. They look at fetal heart rate monitors and they have to decide if that baby's in distress or not. And one of the issues with fetal heart rate monitoring is it's extremely subjective to interpretation. If you ask five obstetricians what that tracing is showing, you'll get four different answers. And they're diametrically opposed answers. Some will say it's distress, some will say it's normal. And that's why we do so many unnecessary C-sections. The technology is hard to interpret, and even if you interpret it correctly, it's wrong, because it's just not a good technology. Yeah, so the, the number is to do a, is there a certain number that you would want to do a C-section at? And, and, and so physicians, this is a big misconception about practicing medicine. There's no number you treat, it's a judgment. And so we're just giving doctors the information they need to make a better decision. So we're not going to tell the doctors, if your baby's oxygen saturation falls below 30, do a C-section, because it's a complex decision, and this is just one piece of information that will help them make better decisions. What we want to do is avoid false positives. So the situation where the monitor tells you that the baby's in trouble, but they're actually fine, and that's not a situation that needs to go to an emergency C-section. So that's how we're positioning. Yeah, right, and that's why we're a class three technology, because this is not something that you can just take to the market without the clinical evidence required to show that. Okay, Thank you terrific. very much. Thank you. Great presentation, Nick. Thank you.